It's good to be alive, good to be here, good to be alert, um, good to be well, good to look out and see people who are, who are here, um, who are well, uh, who are here to worship. Uh, our theme this year is to equip the saints for the work of ministry for the building up of the body of Christ. Um, as a parent, this verse really resonates with me because a whole big part of what we do as parents is this building up to maturehood. Um, we were just talking, was talking to Sarah just um, this morning. We were talking about um, how younger kids now don't have the same work ethic that we had as kids. It's actually frowned upon uh, for kids to be engaged in any kind of work. Um, we keep kids' kids well into adulthood. Um, culture has really shifted. It has really changed. Um, I'm going to talk in a little bit about um, how I think that's really hindered the kingdom, uh, not just our culture, uh, but it's hindered the kingdom, and I think we're reaping what we've sown for the last couple of generations. Um, we're talking a lot about process. Oh, this computer's running slow today. Uh, we're talking about process, um, and I want to mention this each week, um, but we're talking about moving Christians, moving all of us to another level, to another process. As part of maturing, we can't plateau, we can't stagnate. Um, so we talked a lot about this on, on our Wednesday small group, and we talked about how the importance of loving neighbors. Um, this, it's hard to see these pictures, but this is from our past pig roast out at the Gross's barn. Um, and I think our small groups are really important, sitting down and eating with people, Loving people, showing people that we care about them, that we, we want to be involved in their lives. We want to know what's going on in their lives. Um, and that process naturally moves people here to worship, loving God. We have got to show people that we love God. And guys, I think, honestly, this is an area of weakness for us. Um, I think that there are a couple things that, that happened, and this is not a critique, this is not a criticism, this is to say that we can do better. Um, that's not a bad thing. There are many areas in, in all of our lives where we can do better. Um, but there are a couple different approaches towards worship, and one of those is um, negligent worship. Um, we just kind of go along and we get into the routine. You have the same kind of structure, which is, which is fine, but you get in that mindset of, um, of kind of like when you travel down the road. I used to drive truck, you know, average 600 miles a day, you kind of get into a routine and things just get mundane after a while because they're so common, you're just used to it. Um, we can take that approach to worship and neglect to do better, to give God our best. Um, another approach is to be indifferent towards worship, to just say, eh, if, if, I, if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. The problem is the way that we approach worship is the way that we bring people in are going to approach worship to the degree that we give God our all is the same degree that we expect other people to give God. We will never, never have people dedicated to worship if we ourselves are not truly dedicated to worship. Uh, worship is not about showing up, but it's about a discipline and joining together with other Christians and helping to improve their worship and to make them better. And then finally, moving people to serving others. Um, this is a picture from a couple years ago. This is in Ecuador. Uh, again, hard to see, but the two little boys there are Cameron and Isaac with shovels working their little tails off. Um, we are never too young to put a shovel into the hands of kids, to get kids to help raise money for wells, um, to get kids to serve in any capacity. We, they are never too young. And I think we do a major disservice to the kingdom if we fail to show people how to serve. And as, as the minister of this congregation, I get excited about this part probably more than anything else. I love, 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 love to serve. Um, I, I, I honestly, Bill Riggs was, I, I miss that man dearly. And he was one of the biggest mentors in my life from the time I was a newborn. Um, he had a slogan, and he repeated it often to me. I, I don't know if he shared that often with other people, but he said, you know, there's no magic in serving. He said, sometimes you just got to roll up your sleeves 
and get in there and do that work that you hate to do. And he said, you just grit your teeth, you grin it and bear it. Um, and Bill had that servant heart. I love serving others. I love teaching our kids. Natalie and I both love teaching our kids to serve other people. They were never too young to serve. And we've got to move each other to service. Um, mission trips, doing things locally, um, reaching out to people who we know are struggling. Today's sermon, I should really refresh this because I have an admission. I was doing sermon notes in the, in the back sound booth. Sometimes things come to mind and um, I add things on Sunday morning. So now you know my dirty little secret. Um, do something good every day. Don't we all as parents want to teach our children to do good? Today's sermon is about doing good. You know, often we hear the phrase, I want you to be good, right? Well, that has a whole lot of different implications. Obviously, being good is, is good in itself. That's not a bad thing. But are we teaching our children? Are we teaching each other to do good? There's a difference between being good and doing good. And the Bible puts so much emphasis on doing good. Over and over and over again, Scripture uses this phrase, do good to others. By the way, there's a difference, too, between being good, receiving good, and looking good. And I don't mean necessarily, you know. I, you, some of you may have noticed I'm growing my little uh, Goldilocks in. I have really curly hair, and I, I told Natalie I'm determined to grow my afro back. Um, she says no, and she'll probably win this argument in the end, but I'm going to see how far I can push it. Um, but I'm not talking about just looking good physical appearances. I'm talking about having the appearance of being good. And as a culture... I think we're really enmeshed in this. We're ingrained in this. Social media is really affecting the way that kids um, from a young age are learning. It's not their fault, but they're learning through social media, through the way adults behave. They're learning that appearance is everything. The way that you take that snapshot moment in time, you freeze frame that, edit that, and you package that and market it and put that out there for the world to see, to say, look how good I am. There's a radical difference between doing good and looking good, having the appearance of being good, and receiving good. Receiving good is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think also in this consumerism culture that, with, that, that drives us, we're so ingrained to receive things. And people become irate when they don't get the things they want, the things they ordered, the way they ordered it. Valinda, you work in a, in a business, and I'm sure you have never encountered this, where people get upset because what they ordered didn't come when you said it would come. It, it, the order wasn't right. The color is not exactly what I ordered. You know, people become irate when we don't receive good. And the Bible says it's so much better to teach each other to do good. The verse that, uh, or the couple of verses that Jacob read for us this morning comes from Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. And Paul says this to the churches in Galatia. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. The question is, what are we sowing? What in life right now are we sowing? I'm not talking about in the past 10 years. I'm not talking about in the last five years. I'm not talking about in the past five days. I'm talking about right now today, what seeds are you putting in the spiritual ground? What are you sowing today, right now, because guys, I got to tell you, life is really quick. I did some quick math. I'm not good at math, but I just did some math last week because I just was pondering these things. 
And I think I'm living in this perpetual midlife crisis, maybe. And I'm like, you know, crunching numbers and figuring out how much time theoretically I have left. And, 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 and I was doing the math. And the average life expectancy in the United States, it's increasing, which is good, um, I guess. Uh, but it's 82 years old. That's the average lifespan right now in the United States. I did the math, and I thought, well, how many days on earth is that? If I live 82 years, guys, that's only just a little over, I think it's 26,000 days. You ever realize how quick a day goes? You ever realize how quick a month goes? You blink and 30 days is gone. That's 30 days of that 20, it's either 26 or 28,000. Um, it's not a whole lot of days. Life goes really quick. So the question is, what seeds are you sowing right now? Paul says, do not be deceived. God's not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Do we live in a culture? I mean, this is not a trick question. Do we live in a culture that gives up too easily? Yeah, right? I mean, look around at what's happening in the world right now. People throwing in the towel, giving up on, on jobs. I, I just saw another disturbing job report that came out that said there is a mass exodus from the labor force right now. We already have a labor, labor shortage like we've not experienced in generations and that issue is getting compounded because there's a mass exodus of people leaving work. And I don't completely blame people. I think people are burned out. I think people are tired. I think uh, that workload increases when your coworkers leave. Your workload increases. Um, the level of competence, because there's such a, a, a turnaround in the job force right now, the level of job competence is decreasing. Um, we have unskilled people working highly skilled jobs. Uh, Jacob can share some stories of, of nightmares um, out in his workforce, right? We have untrained people who are kind of willing to work, if you want to call it that, and they're really messing things up. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. And so, so many people are just throwing up their, their hands and saying, what can we do? And they're giving up. Churches closing their doors Church after church after church after church. I'm telling you guys, I follow these trends. It's happening at unprecedented rates. Some of you are a little bit more seasoned than I am in life. When I talk about unprecedented rates, I mean unprecedented rates in all of our lifetimes. We've never seen churches closing their doors this quickly it's happening all over the place. And I think part of the problem is we're giving up from doing good. People grow weary of doing good. They do things and expect to, what? Receive good. A lot of us can't help it, really, because we've been ingrained, we've been trained this way, that unless somebody's given me something back, I'm not giving up my time. I'm not giving my money. I'm not giving my, my expertise. Unless I'm receiving something back, I refuse. To, why should I give of my own time and my own money, right? We're trained to think that way, and I think it's doing us a lot of harm. Paul says, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap. Do we believe that, church? Do we really believe that? I hope we do. And I'm not going to lie. I have to remind myself of this often, right? Because I get weary of doing good. We all do. That's part of human nature. 
And so we have to remind ourselves that God is faithful, that if we keep doing good, God will bless you, he'll bless us, he'll bless the congregation, God will bless the kingdom. God's not sitting idly by saying, keep the axe to the grind, see you on the other side. You know, God will bless us if we don't give up. Does anybody know who this man is? Elon Musk, richest man on planet Earth. Elon Musk, um, like him or not, Elon Musk um, is pretty influential, and he talks a lot about uh, how we've kind of created this system that educates people. We send people to higher education with no goal in mind. It's just, you got to get an education, got to go to college, got to, got to rack up all this debt. And then they get out and they learn that I didn't actually need this degree to enter the workforce. So he encourages people instead to use whatever gifts they have and to find whatever passions they have and to pursue that. Um, Elon Musk was asked about failure. In fact, he's asked often about failure and, and people bring back uh, all kinds of companies, uh, PayPal. Elon Musk owned PayPal. It nearly went belly up. Um, Elon Musk dumped it. He got rid of it. He sold it off. PayPal's actually doing pretty good now. Uh, Tesla. Tesla almost, I mean, it was hanging on by, by a thread. <laughs> Literally hanging on by a thread. And Elon Musk said, I'm not giving up. Tesla turned around, didn't it? SpaceX. People mocked SpaceX, because they said that it's impossible for civilians to create a whole system where we're sending rockets to space and we're, you know, we have to reinvent the, the, all the technology that the government has and it cannot be done. Elon Musk laughed and he said, you watch. When we partner with other people and we have this open source system that gets the best minds together and, and, and we encourage people to think and to bring whatever expertise they have to the table. He said, watch what we can do. Elon Musk says this. He said, I guess I just don't accept failure. He said, if I were to quit trying, I'd either have to be dead or severely incapacitated. He said, I will never give up. It's kind of a biblical concept. Musk might not know it, but that's a biblical concept. Never give up in doing good. Never give up when you're trying to improve the earth. You're trying to improve the kingdom. You're trying to improve the life of other people. Never give up. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. This is really interesting. For we are his, as God's, workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So if anybody ever asks you, if they give you a pop quiz out on the street and say, why were you created? Why was mankind created? Now you know the answer. I was created in Christ Jesus for good works. I was created to do good. It's fascinating, isn't it? Paul tells the Thessalonians the same thing he told the Galatians. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. In Hebrews 13, verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And guys, I'm, I mean, true confession. I struggle sometimes with doing good. Um, Natalie will tell you, I, she gets to hear me bark and complain. And there are days when I, when I just blurt it out and I say, I just want one day where somebody doesn't need me. I want to not be needed. I want to be wanted, not needed. And then I come back to, to earth after a while. Um, usually that's a sign of burnout. Uh, whenever you feel that way and you get angry because people need you, of course people need us. We all need each other. The problem is not with them. The problem is with me not taking time to rest and to pull away and to recover. Over and over and over again, the Bible says, do not neglect to do good. Do not grow weary in doing good. Do 
good to others. Share what you have. This is pleasing to God. You were created for this. And I want to challenge you to, starting today, find somebody, somebody who's struggling, somebody who's desperate, somebody who's in need, somebody who's tired, somebody who's lonely, somebody who's not here. Reach out to them and do good to them. This morning, um, I wanted to practice what I preach, and um, I've been making it a goal of mine to do, to do good to at least a minimum of one person a day, to really reach out to somebody and either tell them I love them, um, to, uh, to encourage them, to share something with them. And um, I've been messaging back and forth. We've been praying for Kim Onder, and, and she lives a couple blocks from here. And um, her and her husband, Jim, have been watching our live stream for, for quite a while now. Um, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, Kim's been struggling uh, really badly with cancer. I've gone over and visited with them uh, several times. Jim sent me a message this week, and he said, Kim's not doing well at all. Uh, she's in ICU. Um, she's hanging on for dear life. I said, what can I do? I said, I know that's a cliche statement, but honestly, can I check on your cats? Can I, can I do anything for you? And he said, right now, just pray. Uh, Jim sent me a message a um, couple days ago and said, uh, she's released to come home. She's under hospice care. Um, on a whim, I messaged Jim this morning. I said, I said, how's Kim? Did she get to go home? Is she, is she alert? Is she able to talk? And he said, she has her moments. And he said, God, God shined through and allowed her a brief time where, where she was awake. She was alert. I was able to talk to her a little bit. And I said, Jim, tell, tell Kim whenever she, next time she's awake, awake aware, uh, tell Kim I love her. And he messaged me back, and, and it was this jumbled up message. And you could I could tell in the text that it was a conversation back and forth. He had activated his microphone, and she was, just happened to have a, a brief time right when I texted. She was, she was awake and alert. And um, she messaged back that, that she loves me too. And those moments are not lost on people who are struggling. This is not to brag, it's not to toot my own horn. Um, it's just to say we've, we've got to seize those moments because, guys, life is fast. Life is short. Life is precious. Life goes so quickly. Don't spend it focused on looking good. Spend it focusing on doing good. Grab the hands of somebody else this week. Take your kids out. Do something as a family that's good for somebody. If there's anybody this morning who has not yet taken that step to put Christ on in baptism or anybody who has any prayer needs, we would encourage you to come up as we all stand and sing the song together.